What? <laughs> that was recording. Yes. I thought you. I thought you. I thought you were saying professor. Just look for the deals. They're out there. Yeah, just be very um, be open to like like research. Yay! It's because I missed that one, so I kind of had to out something. Ready? Right. Gang, 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 gang. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope you guys have had a very prosperous 2018. Yeah. We are back at it again. Yep. Back in addition with another one. You guys asked. We're gonna answer. We're here all to right. deliver. So shout out to you guys for all the questions that you guys have been submitting all week to Melissa, or should I say Mel's Sweet. Avenue, and to Marge, or should I say Marge on Demand, <laughs> and to myself. She is royalty. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Shout out to you guys for the questions. Thank you so much because without the questions, obviously we wouldn't be here to answer them for you guys. So hopefully these questions and the answers that we provide for you guys will just be more than fulfilling for y'all. Mm -hmm. So let's cheers to an extraordinary 2018 and an even more extra 2019. Yes. And I like, I like Clank, 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 clank. All right, first question. Miss, to Miss, she is royalty. What's the hardest thing about teaching and the most rewarding? The most difficult thing about teaching is, to be honest, and dealing with the adults. Really? Yeah. Oh. Hmm, yeah, kids, they're, they're being groomed. They, they're being taught how to adjust in certain ways and how to maneuver in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But dealing with the adults is by far the most difficult part because adults are stuck in their ways. And when you say adults, you mean like the administration? Or administration and teachers, teachers too. Other teachers. teachers too. Okay. Administration and teachers. It's hard because everybody as adults like moves in their own way and they're not going to change mm -hmm. unless they're willing to. And some people don't notice their faults which make it even more which makes it even more difficult so i have to say that's the most difficult part um the most rewarding part just getting the love from the kids mm -hmm. your kids look after you no they're <laughs> no nah, my kids act like me it's bad um getting the getting the love from the kids that's the most rewarding part like seeing them grow seeing them pick up some of your traits um, the kids. That's the most rewarding part. Yeah. Nice. She loves hockey. I sure do. She really does. She eat, breathe, mm -hmm. sleep. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, it's a dating question. Is it okay to split the check on the first date? Negative. I don't think so. Wait, wait what? what? Is it okay to split the check on the first date? I thought it depends. I don't. I don't think so. I, don't I mean, if he asks you on a date, he should be paying for your meal. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if it's a first date. Yeah. And traditionally, I feel like the guy is supposed to pay for the. Right. For the check. Yeah. Unless y'all just going out as friends. I mean, if you guys have that mutual understanding. Yeah. Right. That's what I mean. Like it depends. Yeah, but I feel like. But if y'all at the dinner table, the check come and he looking at you like. <laughs> well, you might these days. That's your cue to go. <laughs> you just gotta be like, I'm gonna go use the bathroom. <laughs> Call yourself an Uber. <laughs> and chuck up the deuces, cause uh uh. Yeah. yeah I don't get take care of it. I feel like that's the way it's supposed to be. Right. I don't know. Nowadays, things have changed. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm like. Yeah, this generation is a little bit different than what we're used to. You so. got these independent women. Do all that all the time. Yeah. Yes, but we could be independent and my still be taken care of. Too. Exactly. Agreed. Mm -mm. Pay. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh -uh. You ask me out, you, you pay. pay. Ask me out. Ask me out. I cannot. Ask me out. Okay. Take me out. That's the song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
this one's for you march okay what's the best way to travel as far as cost wanting to live my best life on a budget <laughs> friend um uh, i would say get like a credit card that has travel rewards that's smart um like not with the hefty you know credit limit but something that you can put your um trips on and you know you have the money now you're not but going to go spend a two thousand dollar trip but you ain't got two thousand dollars in your account now but you want to be you want to be realistic as far as getting that credit card putting your um exp expenses on there so you can travel and then earn points back like reward points um i think there's a lot of feasible trips finding a cheap flight and trip is not that difficult now it's very easy yeah very, very easy Flights have so many deals nowadays, like mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. You can find a super cheap deal. And I think traveling in groups is especially important because yes. it cuts the cost in half. You're, if you're going, times, three times, exactly, four like times. you're splitting everything. So it becomes like nothing. So I would say in order to do, to do that, I would say get um, some reward card type setup and then to travel with a, um, with a group of friends. And if you're not that type of person that travel with a group of friends, traveling alone is fine too. Um, that's perfectly fine. This is. And then <laughs> just look for the deals. They're out there. Yeah, just be very, um, be open to like, like research. Yeah. Like it's a lot of research. Mm -hmm. If you're subscribed to like jetblue.com, if there's like $59 exactly. one ways, book your one start way. there, your start one with way. a one way. Yep. Um, just a lot of research. It's not hard. I don't think it's hard. I think do your research and also save your money. Yeah. Yeah. Save don't your go money. crazy. Like spread your trips out too. Like spread them out. Oh, my battery about to die. Like spread them out. Oh, my battery about to die. Like spread them out. Oh, my battery about to die. I'm done. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. It states any suggestions about relocating to a new state. Slash helping someone who is interested in moving get over their fear of failure and being alone. Any suggestions about relocating to a um, to a different state? I say just do it. Um, no pun intended. Right. None. <laughs> he never looked. Suggestions? I say um, go out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of times we get stuck in our uh, own minds that we get stuck in, we get comfortable where we are. And the, the thought of doing something different or moving to a different setting, it scares us, of course, because it's new. We don't know anybody there possibly, and it's a, like a new setting. But I think sometimes you need, in, in life, in order for things to change and for you to advance, you need to take those risks and just go outside your comfort zone and, and just go. Um, go strategically though. I was yes. gonna say that, make plan sure ahead. you plan, look at the area, cost of living what jobs or if you're going to be doing your own thing or making or you're transferring a job making sure that you know you're going to be making enough to be able to maintain the lifestyle that you would like to have in that new state mm -hmm. um making sure you look at their local and federal taxes to see how much tax because everything is different especially from florida if you move to georgia or north carolina stuff, it's going to be different so anything that you set your mind to to go and move to just make sure you have a plan in place before you just up and jump in and go I agree. And as far as pushing your friend, what was the what was it? Yeah, helping someone who's interested in moving, but getting over the fear of failure and being alone. Gas them up. Yeah, gas them up, and also remind them like you don't ever want to wonder what if, what if I didn't, what if I did go, how would life have been different for me? Like yeah. you never want to wonder what if. So go for it, do it, and motivate. Be your be the cheerleader for your friend. Yeah, because sometimes. Our, within ourselves we don't see what other people see or right. the people that are close to us see mm -hmm. so I'm definitely a big advocate for just giving that positive reinforcement because you really need that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so definitely yeah like what you said be that positive touch and that that cheerleader for that person right we got each other up all the time yeah all the time do what is best for you for you do you right. for you be you mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, next question. How do you know when you've been friend zoned? Oh. Um. <laughs> why are you looking at me? I mean, I feel like guys put in a lot of effort if they're really trying to talk to you. I mean, I feel like look for the signs. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I think you would know. Like if someone's not like if someone's not giving you attention, he's not calling you back. The texts yeah. are falling off. The texts is just dry. One you answers, know, like, um, y'all not going out as often. The communication yeah. is very blah. It's only like, hey, how yeah. are you doing? And Ooh, you're the one who's talking to yourself. Oh God, it's this question: What you up to? No. <laughs> no. And. Oh what no! To? Definitely too, because when guys are talking, well, well even us humans, when we're interested in a guy. We talk to them very often. You're very, right. you're Open. gonna make time for the people you care about and you want to get to know. So if you know you're not having that that those conversations daily, or it ain't happening. That means and listen to your intuition too. Like you know, right? You'll be feeling some type of way. Like, hmm, is something going on? Like, listen to your gut instinct. The women intuition is very real. Very yeah. real. Investigate. Yeah, but if it's somebody you're talking to, you don't have to necessarily investigate. No, you could, you could, I, you could still do. General, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, not cool. but not too. I'm not saying like. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, investigate. You know, the settings. Like, okay, how is he when he's around you, other people? Like, when you guys go out, is he like clingy or is yeah, he? Yeah. You know, then you could be like, okay, he's not feeling me that type of way. Yeah, I was about to give a um, savage answer. Right. If he if he's not clingy, then you know. Not like clingy. But you gotta know yeah. the guy too. Like you gotta know how he move. Like watch how he move. Watch how he mm -hmm. move. Yeah. Be very observant. Yeah. Very, very observant. Mm -hmm. Watch how he move. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that 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 was the answer. Yeah. <laughs> be observant. <laughs> what is our favorite wine? Ooh, Riscato. Red wine, sweet red wine, <laughs> and they have another one now—a peach. I think a peach one. Not really? The rosé one? Yeah. It's not L five. Yeah. Ooh, but I, I like Rusca with, with an R. Roscato, not Moscato. Roscato. Roscato. In the black bottle, all black. Okay. Who that in all that black? <laughs> yes, that's my all-time fave since like. It's been a long time. Yeah, it has uh, been. A long yeah, time. I went to a North Carolina one break, and then I, yeah, they served it at uh, Olive Garden. I was like, "What wine is that?" And then ever since then, I don't really have a favorite wine. No, I like you I know. like tasting. No, I don't think I do. Mm -mm. Yeah. At one point, it was cupcake. That one's good. Um. Yeah. Like, okay. What type mm -hmm. of wine do you like? Sweet or? I like, like sweet, sweet wine. I don't like bitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bitter probably. Yeah. What about you? I don't know. I like Roscato. I like Cupcake. But I want to say the best. I like Relax too. Um, I think that was bitter to me. Like, really? like, it, ooh, like it's not sweet enough. Bart and Yura. That's my favorite. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite Moscato. I don't know for sure. Was that the Bart and Yura the blue bottle? bottle with Italy on it? Yeah, oh, that, 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 one, good. that one's <laughs> That one is good. Fire. Next question. How did you all handle your seasons of singleness? If it applies to any of you. I would say, how how did you all handle your season of singleness? Just divulge into work. I mean, enjoy the enjoy the time to get to know yourself, mm -hmm. get to know you. Who, who learn how to love yourself? Because in order to love someone else, you need to know what your worth is and what love is for you. Yes, mm -hmm. So I would say take mm -hmm. that time to dedicate to exploring who you are, what you like, what you don't like, so you can be able to fulfill that and give that full love to someone else mm -hmm. so that's why i would say during those seasons just focus on you nobody else like do a freaking study abroad go by yourself go on a trip by yourself take that time to just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hone in on you your devotions realizing what it is your attributes and stuff in your lifestyle that you would like that's what i think i answered it for you guys but yeah know, yeah i would say be that selfish yeah yes. honestly be selfish do your singleness is do. very important like the time mm -hmm. that you're single your singleness is very important i would say value that because once you <clears throat> once you um in a relationship or then you, and then you evolve and get married you don't really have that time to yourself anymore right you're from that point on you're with someone for forever basically so and you have to be selfless exactly so you need to really i would say enjoy that time while you can if you have the yeah. opportunity to Enjoy being alone. Enjoy yeah, those moments. Yeah, sortie, travel, take those fait plaisir. In. Yeah. Take that time to heal as well. Yes. Oh, good. good, yeah. Take that yeah. time to heal as well. Uh, oftentimes, mm -hmm. you know, you get out of a relationship and then you don't heal properly. You enter another relationship and... Yeah. That was good. Yeah. So make sure you take that mm -hmm. time to also heal and really deal with yourself because that's the hardest thing to do is to check your 
self. Yes. So really deal with yourself mentally mm -hmm. and emotionally. Mm -hmm. Heal. Because yes. then whoever you are going to be with, you get to love them unconditionally. Yeah, realize your faults mm -hmm. and like realize... Because every day you're always trying to better yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So realize like your weak points and work on those to just make yourself even better for when that person does come. Mm-hmm. But yeah, healing yourself, that's mad important. Yeah, that's very Cause Because you don't want things in the past to like reoccur and cause even more defo right. sure. in the future. Been there, doing that. Chug up the deuces. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <Extra>. Next. <laughs> you know, I haven't really heard it. That's a song song? Yeah. yeah. I haven't heard it. Ariana Grande. Right. My friends are telling me to move on, but I know in my heart he's my soulmate. Help. You know in your heart. I, I can't soulmate. really answer that. <laughs> okay, wait. Say it, again, say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. My friends are telling me to move on, but I know in my heart he's my soulmate. Help. Okay. Are you waiting for him to become a man? What? Are you waiting for him? If this is your soulmate, but your friends are telling you to move on, then that means he has to be doing something where he's still acting like a boy or he's not he's not actually committing to you. Or it might be soulmate in disguise and maybe this is just a lesson that you're about to learn for something in the future. I mean, yeah, that too. But if your friends are telling you to move on, then what, what's really the problem? But your friends aren't really dating him. You are. Yeah, but they see how he treats you. Hmm. But I mean, if they... How if do you, you know go, if somebody's really your soulmate? That's what I'm saying. Like, are you sure, sure that he's your soulmate? Or are you just stuck on him? They quit um, the night. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, that's, that's another thing too. Like, and another thing too is if he's your soulmate, does he believe that you're his? Damn. Those are all good questions, guys. Oh no, Melissa. Good, good Melissa, point. high key killing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I you don't know. No, I'm seriously. Like, mm -hmm. Cause you know you don't ever want to be in a one-sided type of situation ship slash relationship. You can't be the only person giving all the love, but then there's no love given back. So I mean, if your friends are watching. My friends are telling me to move on. I would like to know what, why are your friends telling you to move on? Exactly. What, what, yeah, char what yeah. characteristics does he have? Are, you seeing, are your friends seeing that you're not seeing that right. is telling them that you need to move on? Yeah. Right. So I think you need to, you don't, I would say, don't ever allow outside people to weigh in, but what characteristics are your true friends seeing that right. they're telling you that you need to move on from? So I would say analyze that situation. I and then. Because sometimes you could be blinded by love, child. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is it really what you think it is? Right. And knowing your heart that he's my soulmate. And then also, what, yeah, what what tells you that he's your soulmate? Right. That's what I was saying. Like, how do you know, you know somebody's your soulmate? Like, truly, how do you know that? Um, I don't know. Because it's more of like if you feel that you can deal with their flaws and all, and they can deal with your flaws and all. But it goes back to the question of, are you his soulmate? I think people have their soul their soulmates for a period a season in their life. Not like to say like mm -hmm. someone could be in a like let's say like, I'm giving an example like Steve Harvey right so he he could have said that his first wife was his soulmate for that season in his life mm -hmm. she was there fulfilling that moment of time in his life he felt like that was her soulmate now that he's with Marjorie that's his soulmate in his season of his life now you get what I'm saying like mm -hmm. I don't feel like I never did that you could have one. Oh, well, that's like, you know, people are in your life for a season. Yeah, like... Yeah, people are in your life for a season, So I don't think, like... I wouldn't say that they're your soulmate. Yeah. They were only there for a season. It's the same thing as saying, um, you know who your friends are as far as the ones that you have in your life for a season and yeah. then the ones that you have for a whole lifetime. Yeah. I don't know. That's what... I feel like we need more information. We need so more juice. juice. Is it wrong to order an expensive meal on the first date? Hell nah. <laughs> no. Nope. Negative. No. Nope. If you feel like you feel bad that you're about to get an expensive meal on the first date. Why are you going? It's not even you that. Are you paying? Wait, wait. Do you usually wait to see what they order first? Like you'd be like, let me see. No, I'm just saying. I, I, I I've know. never done that. I never paid attention no, to that. Me neither. No, me I'm just curious. I just yeah, order my food. We, yeah. We're here for a reason. You wanted to take me out. And you should know the restaurant you're going to, the price, the prices. I mean, 
mean, you might, on the not date, you might you. ask, like, oh, what are you thinking about getting? But, like, it's yeah. like, you look at what it is, but I don't think anybody really looks at the price point. I mean, I don't. Are you purposefully <laughs> getting an expensive meal, though? Some people market, do that. Market, I know. Yeah. I'll get the market fish and, you know. Some people. The market the, fish. The mahi-mahi. Some people, you know, they just want an expensive free meal. On the first, I mean. Listen. Probably be the most expensive that could come, just like this. One, I know. One little scoop. One little scoop. <laughs> now, and to be honest with you, too, yeah, that's true. The most expensive <laughs> stuff is not the best tasting stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really not. Right to chilies. Two for 22. <laughs> chilies food, though, is clutch. That's, that's all right. What has been a way you've changed your fashion in 2018? For me, I've just been wearing a lot more oversized baggy clothes. They're more comfortable for me. Especially in my season of being in school, leggings, baggy sweatshirt, windbreaker, wide ass bag. gotta go analyze what her style was this year. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I think very chill. This year has been very chill. Mm -hmm. Like low maintenance, clothes. like low, right. like a jeans, a top, go to turban. Right. Jean. I've been really denim. Jean jacket. Denim been my whole been, life. Like, 2018, that's been like the whole. Yeah. Then I'm Jean Jacket. Um, when you're going out, you want to, you know, look nice weddings. A, a lot of those type of occasions, you want to, you know, look nice and pull out the long dresses and, you know, look good. But yeah. still simple, chic. Comfortable. Yes. I think, that's been nice I think this year I've been more comfortable. It's been very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this year I, I geared to be more comfortable. Um... I don't think my style has really changed. It's just being more comfortable. I think this year I've been less risque. Mm -hmm. Um, I think so. No, I don't think so. As far as your everyday clothes, yes. What but for weddings, you... child. That's not risque. No, that's not risque. Risque, risque like showing skin. Oh no, you've been very covered up this year. Yeah. yeah. This year I've been less risque. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's not like you. Good job. <laughs> I just realized that. I know, like, yeah. yeah, I've been less very risky. profesh. Very, yeah, 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 yeah. I have school wise too. You've been very yeah. professional. Yeah. I'm calm. telling you, I've been real cute going to work. <laughs> I have. I sure have. My kids are like, "Oh, I like that outfit." I'm like, I want to like this guy because he's attractive and smart. Can my feelings grow over time? I do think that your feelings can grow over time naturally, but I guess it depends. I feel like it depends. It depends. This question's giving me a headache. Yeah. No, child. It's so, oh, it's, so it's a lot. It's, mm. I want to say it depends because one of my friends, she didn't like this guy at all. And they're about to get married. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, you hear about things happening. Yeah. I feel like let nature take its course. Mm -hmm. It has to happen naturally. If it's just not there, then it's just not there. Like. You know, if you have a friend and he ever tells you that he likes you, but and you know he's a good guy, but you're just not attracted. Yeah, I say it's let okay. nature take its course. Yeah. yeah, it's okay to not be attracted to somebody. Let who's a it good flow. Person. Let it flow. All right, also. <laughs> I don't need. I don't think you should force yourself to like the person, though. Nah, no. nah, 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 nah. So, nah. if you feel like that's what you're doing, I would say be friends, and then if it moves on yeah, to friends. You know, like that. if it moves past the friend zone, then you're good. I don't want to be in the friend zone. Baby, let me love you. Love All right. I'm falling for I you. Only have, me, oh, me, me. I only have fun with this guy I'm dating when we drinking. Is that a problem? Yep. yep. Yes. It's flaw. Girl, actually, you wait. knew when you was writing that question it was a problem. No, actually. When we're drinking, like the drink, right? I mean, why do you have to have fun when you're drinking? You can't have fun when you're not drinking. Is he boring but when y'all don't, don't, don't drink? Don't but don't, um, the... what is it? Drinking speaks sober thoughts? Yes. It does, but that's the only time. Y'all could have a good time. It ain't substantial. There is no substance. Like, you gotta make you laugh on a regular. Like. It can't just be when you're not drinking. Pop on in. Favorite foundation. Oh, yeah. High end, Fenty Beauty, low end, Revlon cover, cu color, color stay, and mocha. 
High end Estee Lauder Double Wear, low end Maybelline Fit Me. I'm gonna just do low end, y'all. <laughs> Cause I don't have no high end right now. Um, no Smashbox. Oh yeah, Smashbox, mm -hmm. but it's discontinued. It's but it's still well, high end. It's, it's still your favorite, if you like it. Yeah, but it's discontinued. I'm not gonna tell somebody a discontinued thing, they can't Daddy. go find the product. Daddy. Anyways, low budget friendly, boo-boo. Cover girl matte. Is that what what it's called? The new CoverGirl matte foundation in the color 60, D60. It's clutch. <laughs> How do I make my eyeshadow pop? You put um, concealer, base, with it, a strong, a a strong base, base, a good base. Whether it's white, yeah. um, P. Louise, um, a lighter color concealer, set it. Sometimes if you don't set it, it might work. A you white concealer. That's what I'm saying. Some people, it depends on what type of eye look you're going for. Mm -hmm. If it's dramatic, if it's not. If it's dramatic, if you use concealer on the eyelid, you don't have to put the powder. Just go with the depends color. Depends on the concealer. Really? Depends on the concealer. Because not all concealers are, concealers are bomb. Oh, true. Um, the next question is, what is your favorite hair vendor? Mm -hmm. I ain't got one. Um, we just buy right. hair. Right here? <laughs> this is my hair vendor. Wraps by Bijou. <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, famous, famous, favorite. I don't have really. I don't have. I want to say Yolisa because that's one of the people I've been ordering from. I haven't ordered here in so long. Neither have I. Good for you. Like, I, th them wigs just been here Everything. for a long time. If you want a synthetic wig, I would say Friday Amazon. Night Hair. Oh, yeah, Amazon Hair is good. Amazon be good. But I, know the, I know the brands though. If you want mm -hmm. a synthetic wig, mm -hmm. Friday Night Hair. Oh, yeah. The hairline is. Yeah, cheap wigs too. Mm hmm. They, they, they've been lasting too. Amazon. Just a wig. Just got a wig. Yeah. Just yeah. got a wig. How do you recommend searching for the perfect nude lipstick? That one's tough because I don't like nude sometimes because I'm of a darker, darker skin tone. So I feel like sometimes it looks too pale, like on liner. Yeah. But I think it's, it's using yeah using the correct liner and making sure that you're outlining and being very. Strategic. What was the question? It's so nice to not have to answer these questions. What was the question? How do you recommend searching for a perfect nude lipstick? Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all how I do it. I'll go on YouTube, look for somebody who's near my complexion. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. And then see if I like their nude lipstick or their yeah. new color. I'll go and find, you know, do my research and find out um, what lipstick or lip gloss or lip liner. Get it for myself, try it out if it works. Most of the time it works for me, so. But don't let a nude scare you. Like, the liner is like the crucial part about it. Cause it might be light. Mm -hmm. Like a nude lippy might be very light in your eyes, but if you apply it gradually mm -hmm. to get the nude that fits you, then by all means go for you. Whether it's a pink nude, a mauve nude, a brown nude, a cool tone nude, it's all up to you. Mm -hmm. We are done. Dun, dun, dun. 2018 is a wrap, people. Reynolds. It's a wrap. 2019, here we come, full throttle. You're so cheesy. You are. I thought I was the cheesy one. <laughs> no, you're not. She is. I miss you guys. I know. All right, guys, that was the last question. Thank you for joining us on another Sip and Slay. Yay! It's because I missed that one, so I kind of had to <laughs> Thanks guys for tuning in. Thanks for submitting your questions. Yes. Make sure you follow all of us on our social media handles. Yes. They'll be somewhere on the screen. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe to She Is Royalty. And make sure you hit the notification bell. <laughs> make sure you go to over to my channel, Mel's Avenue. Go ahead mm -hmm. and click that subscribe button yes. and click the bell yes. notification so you can be notified whenever we post a new video. Go on Instagram, follow March on Demand. Yes. Follow up. Follow all of it. Everything. Just everything. Everything. Keep up. Yes. Everything. Love y'all. Mm -hmm. See you guys next time. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh. <laughs> it's like you said, yeah. That's how it should be saying. It's not like you said feet, bro. Oh Happy God. New Year. Happy New Year.